This is quite an unusual water pump. And it's out of a piece of equipment used in Europe. I'm not sure how popular it is in America, but it's a device called a condenser tumble dryer. And it's basically a laundry dryer. You can plug it in any socket in the house and it doesn't need ported to the outside because it circulates the air through a heat exchanger and it collects the water. And this is the pump that then pumps up to a collection tray at the top of the machine. It just makes it very convenient to use it. And this pump, uh, I've been looking at it, I've already taken the base off it. It's got a rubber impeller, which is designed to probably help it start because of the type of motor it is. It's a synchronous motor, and it can probably rotate in our direction because of that. But also the flexing of the rubber uh, fins, the impeller here, means it. if there's any debris goes through, it can get rid of it. It's not going to foul up in it but also it does help with that initial starting because it's not really starting against a significant load because the springy rubber plate when it is spinning and well uh, let me show you the motor because this uh, i've unclipped this off the top it's very interesting design here is the motor and it is a synchronous motor it's got the this is quite hard to pull out because there's a powerful magnet in here uh, this is now turning freely because that uh, magnet is in here and there's no um, stator uh, around it anymore but here is the actual winding in the motor it's got a dual winding and I wonder if the reason it's got a dual winding is for different voltages or it's just because it's a convenient way of doing it there'll be a link somewhere oh there it is the winding goes from one end to the other and then links across comes back again to the two spade terminals and this operates at our mains voltage 23240 volt and it generates a magnetic field in here, and because it's alternating, because there is that magnet in there, it then gets uh, gets this spinning. When this spins, it throws the water outwards, whichever way it spins, and it's got this little scoop here. And it's quite a... It's, I doubt this is an efficient design, but it's just optimised mm -hmm. for reliable operation. Uh, and it throws the water out against this curved channel here, which diverts up a pipe and it only has to go to the top of the machine where it goes into the water container. I'll show you that in a moment. So this, when it goes together, literally just this slides in and clips on. The water finds its way in over the top of the pump uh, through this channel here. And it's worth mentioning that because they've uh, kept the motor above the height of the water, it means, and they've got a big long shaft coming down here, it means that water can't theoretically get into the motor. Very interesting, very minimalist design, but that's not really surprising given the market it's aimed at. Okay, so that is the pump. Noting that the water comes out here, goes to the top, and if it overflows in the collect container, it comes back down to the sump again. Uh, but I shall show you that in the, uh, the pictures I've got here. So this is sold under various brands. Indicit, Hot Point, they're all the same machine. Uh, they just have different uh, logos on them. And this one is actually slightly different from mine. Here is the entrance with the drum for the clothing. Here is the lint filter and here is the condenser. And I'll show you the condenser in a, in a moment. This is an air inlet uh, vent. And this machine doesn't use a heat pump for the condensing. It simply uses the very hot air circulating in a continuous loop inside the uh, drum chamber to uh, pass through a heat exchanger and then it's got a cold air path which is just ambient room temperature air which is cooler than the hot air so it goes in here and passes through that and then literally comes out underneath the machine just back into the room on the back of the machine the condenser well, actually, i'll show you the condenser that's a, a good idea i'll show you the condenser it's big will it fit Will it fit under the thing? So here's the air inlet into the condenser. And the air goes from the lint filter in here and comes out the other side. I'm going to try and tilt this up. Oh, really, that's not, not going to work, is it? But not to worry. So this condenser has two separate paths. It's got the cold air path that passes through the, these thinned areas here. And then it's got the hot air path, which goes through these channels, these uh, hollow channels from one side to the other. And what happens is that the room temperature air is blowing through these to keep these channels cool. And the hot air from the tumble dryer, the drum, is passing through these. The water condenses out. It gets to the end. And because this is a slight angle, it drips off this ledge into a collection thing at the back of the machine. 
Let me just put this down out of the way and bring the next exhibit. It's collected in a sump, which I'll show you in a moment, uh, and then it's pumped up. Now, this looks like the powder, the detergent drawer, and it's the same case. The whole front of the machine is repurposed for loads of different machines for manufacturing reasons. But when you pull it out, instead of the uh, detergent drawer, you've got this big, huge water reservoir. And right at the back of the water reservoir, which actually protrudes slightly at the back of the machine to a container, is the water inlet. And when the water's pumped up from that pump, it goes in here and it fills up this reservoir. And every so often you just pull it out and you empty it. Now let me get back to the... Now you know what's happening. Let me bring this picture back in and focus back down onto it. I think I could have zoomed out a little bit, a tiny bit there, but really it's an enormous thing. So now you know the, the basic principle. I'll show you a little doodle of the air path through this machine. So if this is the machine seen from the side, there is the drum from the side. The hot air path is the, there's a fan down here blowing air up past a heating element with a therm, thermostat on it. And it blows it through the drum with all the clothes tumbling in it. And that very hot humid air then comes down through the lint filter. I shall just draw that in as the lint goes through the lint filter and then goes into the heat exchanger that I've just shown you, goes in that scoop, passes through those channels, uh, and any water drips out into this sump at the back, but then it, the hot air passes back up, past the heater again, and it's just a closed loop inside the machine. The cold air for the same condenser unit, if you're looking for the front of the machine, there's a fan in the front, and it's interesting to note the fan that circulates the hot air, the fan that circulates the cold air, they're on the same motor that actually rotates the drum. And they, the fan at the front draws air in from the room, blows it through the condenser, it then passes out a channel at the bottom of the machine, and just basically you get a warm flow of air coming out the bottom of the machine. But the, it's not the same hot, moist air, it's actually just dry air that's flowing around it. The water that's collected goes into a little sump with a little, uh, what you might call a dam in it. Uh, if you've got one of these machines, it's occasionally worth opening this, but it's quite hard to open. You have to unclip it from the machine and that involves taking the panels off. But it uh, has two things in it. I can show you that in the back of the picture here. There's a little uh, dam about here and a little channel for the water to actually come out from the collection place in the machine and then this area here is where the pump is and there's also in here there's a styrofoam or polystyrene float switch that goes up and there's a micro switch there and if the water level gets too high it will actually turn that off now the pump just runs all the time literally from the point you turn the machine on the pump just runs continually and it only pumps the water when there is water there there's always going to be a certain level of water that's uh, pumping up and down in this pipe and it's going up and it's not managing to get out so it'll come back down and then the pump will throw up again so it does make a sort of rhythmic noise like many washing machines do when they're emptying water um, and the idea of the float switch is that when that water drawer is full, the water is pumped up, but if it uh, can't fill it anymore, if it overflows, it comes back down. Uh, so I think the black pipe is the one that's actually going up to the top and pouring the water into that tray. And when it overflows, it goes down this pipe, and that's the only point that that float switch down here will actually activate and all it does is it turns the machine off literally kills the power to the machine and there's a probably a neon indicator wired across it and a, a little neon indicator just lights the front of the machine saying well there it is there's a little indicator there it says empty water container so is there anything else i can really add to this so there's the drum, there's a the lint filter, the hot air is coming out, it's going down through a scoop here, going to the back, condensing out, the cold air is blowing through here, that's more or less it, and there's the actual water reservoir drawer that you pull out. Uh, it's very handy. It's just the fact that you can just basically put this machine anywhere in your house, plug it into any socket, because all our sockets are capable of powering a 3 kilowatt load. I think it's a 2 kilowatt heater in here. Um... And it just means you don't need to worry about a vent going to the outside the building. Um, all you have to do for maintenance is empty that chamber of water, 
empty the lint filter and every so often pull out this uh, condenser unit and just give it a wash under the sink, uh, in the sink under the tap, just to spray out any sort of fluff that has managed to build up in it to keep maximum efficiency. They're very good. It's very interesting. I could have zoomed out, couldn't I? But by far one of the most interesting bits, apart from the condenser, is the construction of this pump and the fact that, you know, it's just designed to operate within a known water level and keep the motor out of reach of that and just operate continuously, even if there's no real major amount of water down there to pump up. But that is it. It's an interesting construction, super minimalist design, just mass produced cheap. There's only three motors in the machine. The one for the drum and the two fans, the hot and cold fan, the pump motor, and the one for the little time uh, switch that you set the time or some of the electronic controls, and it just counts round uh, from the point you start it to the point the cycle is finished. But there we have it. Uh, interesting special purpose pump component.